guys, how you guys doing? Welcome to Apple Weekly number 41. The show where I cover everything Apple, covering all the latest stories, everything that's going on in the Apple sphere. Being broadcasted both on YouTube and iTunes, links of where you can watch it are in the description below. If you're watching on iTunes, if you can leave a comment, that would be pretty nice. As usual, before getting into the show, we'd like to thank parcelmonkey.com and of course, I'd really like to thank myself, iGear.com. Check these two links out, you will not be disappointed. Going on with the weekly Apple openings, Apple opened up two new stores in China or the Far East region. The first one is the third Apple store in Shanghai uh, and this can handle up to, wait for it, 30,000 visitors a day, houses 300 employees in itself. Uh, and of course Apple opened up their first official Apple retail store in Hong Kong which I must say looks absolutely gorgeous. It's just located above some sort of highway and you can see it um, and it could be a distraction to the drivers. Imagine you're just you know, kind of casually driving, you see this massive Apple logo and you're drilling uh, and you just get carried away and the next minute you're, your car is into a bus. Um, so yeah, I probably shouldn't drive the next time I'm in Hong Kong, but needless to say, this image in itself just sums up everything when it comes to Apple, design, location, wow. Next up, the story that you all want to hear, the iPhone 5, the next generation iPhone 5, when is it going to be released, blah blah blah. So all things digital came out clean and they said Apple is going to announce they're going to hold a keynote on the 4th of October. Apparently they've spoken or they've got insiders that this is a scheduled date. Nothing official from Apple at the moment uh, and the loop kind of backed all things D up. They've got somewhat of a good record in being correct most of the time so yeah it is looking, the, the most likely date is going to be October the 4th. Yes, you know dates have been announced in the past and they've just totally been you know ridiculous. Apple could, could still come out and say nope it's actually going to be the 3rd or the 5th just to kind of, you know, put their fingers up at, you know, All Things D for leaking the date. The report by All Things D also states while there's going to be a keynote on the 4th of October, the phone itself or the next generation iPhone will be launched a few weeks after, which is kind of traditional with the iPhones. The previous iPhones that came, they were announced a couple of weeks uh, in advance and then, you know, a launch date was kind of set. Um, so the same kind of, I guess, makes sense goes with this iPhone, although it is late this year, so they might just launch it on day one. Who knows? And kind of similar to this 4th of October event, the venue itself is going to be Apple HQ, or that's at least according to the sources uh, and all things D. They're not saying why Apple have chosen their HQ. Now, Apple HQ, there have been events out there before, the Back to Mac event, the iPod events, the antenna gate issue happened, it's all in-house. Why they're doing the iPhone, presentation or the iPhone keynote when they've done the iPhone stuff at a bigger venue in some sort of art center in San Francisco could they not get dates uh, because remember it's been a tradition where Apple have had the iPhone launch at a specific date pretty much every year annually roughly saying that so could they not just get the dates that they wanted with the halls booked up or is Apple, you know, really struggling for money? Are they just trying to save costs? You know, we all know how poor Apple is and they can't afford to, you know, buy venues. Or is it more just to give Tim Cook a, a stand, a hard kind of ground to say, look, this is, I'm the new CEO and things are gonna go my way this time. And they're just trying to do in-house everything for this first thing. Uh, and there's gonna be obviously other execs, as has been the case for the previous iPhone events where Steve Jobs, you know, he comes in, pops back out, others come in, Scott Forstow, um, and other Phil Schiller. But in terms of the rumoured day, I think I've spent quite a lot of time on it already. We'll find out this coming week for sure. This is a major event, and if Apple want to get all the press and the PR, the journalists out, they need to give advance notice. It's not going to be a case of giving them 24 or 48 hours advance notice. It's going to be a good week, two weeks, 10 days. So the respective journalists are all, all around the world, in the UK, Europe, Australia, China, wherever, they can make appropriate travel arrangements to, you know, the, uh, to America or the United States. And um, so we will 
in my opinion here's something this week officially from Apple also some very interesting stuff and this usually happens around about an iPhone launch Apple have started to block dates for employees at retail stores so basically employees can't take days off they've just blacked it out and the dates that have been blacked out are the first two weeks of October signaling we will see the iPhone whether it be the 4S or the 5th generation um, in, in the early early October, the first two weeks. Specifically, Apple Insider has said that Apple has started to inform the Apple Care Department, the support department, to expect a lot of calls around the 10th of October. Uh, and they say the reason for that is because there's going to be the iOS 5 launch. So could we see iOS 5 plus, you know, uh, the iPhone 5 or the iPhone 4S or whatever it's going to be? Kind of makes sense to have them both launch at the same time. I don't know why they will launch iOS and then a month down the line or a few weeks down the line launch an iPhone 5. That surely would not make any business sense because there would be no need for people to upgrade. Yes, there will be some saying, you know, they'll just go out and buy the next generation iPhone. But if, it, but if the problem can be sorted for the majority of some people through iOS 5 on their current phones, then there is really no business sense in, or any sense in upgrading your phone or your handset. So from a business point of view, I can't see them having too much of a gap in between the iOS 5 launch and the next generation iPhone launch. It's got to be together. And while I'm doing this video, there's been an update saying that UK Apple stores have also had to block employee dates for the first two weeks of October, which makes me happy. And staying on with the iPhone stories, this picture has been kind of leaked of course, OtterBox are a huge manufacturer when it comes to accessories for your handsets, specifically iPod, iPhone uh, sets. Uh, and this picture has been leaked. iPhone 4S is indeed what has been written. This picture, taken by some random and posted on the internet, causing a lot of controversy. Because, uh, of course, that's suggesting that we are indeed going to see uh, kind of a minor bump. You know, the difference between the 3G and 3GS while there was a bumpage it wasn't that great you know it was just kind of more speedier and the same here indicates uh, and specifically on the back of the iphone with the camera is they've made the lens a bit wider bigger space um, and of course some blogs tried to chase up orbox to see the validity of this and orbox pretty much said they don't have any agreements with Apple, any kind of confidentiality agreements. They don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and whichever iPhone debuts on uh, the 1st of October or whenever, uh, the first two weeks of October, they will cater for it. So this really could be one of many packaging ideas, uh, you know, in the works, in the design. Of course, companies such as, you know, third party manufacturers are going to be having different scenarios, working on different designs. So come the first two weeks of October, it's not really going to be much of a surprise. Um, and they're probably just testing the waters for all we know and take from this what you can. Okay, okay. So moving on to some non iPhone related news. The iPod Touch, what is going on with it? Are we going to see a refresh? The refresh date or the annual time when an iPod is refreshed has gone. It usually happens in the first two weeks of September and we're coming to the end of September. Uh, and the word on the street is all we're going to see for the next generation iPod Touch whenever it does get kind of released. And it is en route, by the way, it's been confirmed by multiple kind of sources. All we're going to see is a colour change, which we all wanted, didn't we? Just a white colour, and it just makes it much more magical. Apart from that, some minor changes to the hardware probably make it a bit more speedier. A better camera uh, would be welcomed. Uh, they're going to change the kind of coating on it as well, um, and something to do with the ambient light sensor. But yeah, 9to5Mac and all these other rumour sites are saying they expect the next generation iPod Touch to be identical to the fourth generation iPod Touch. And last but not least, this should make some of the pro video guys a bit happier. An update to Final Cut Pro X has been released and they've released XML support which is what kind of major uh, kind of annoyance was with uh, some video editors, you know, the lack of support from the previous versions now it's here although they're saying the major update to the multi-cam editing and broadcast quality video we're going to see next year 
Um, but it's kind of good to see they are doing this and all the sound effects and everything are bundled inside so you don't need to download the additional content once you've got it. Plus, on top of that, you can trial uh, Final Cut Pro X. So it'll give you a trial for 30 days. You don't need to fork it $300. Use it, you know, find that you don't like it and then can't get a refund. Although there have been people who have managed to get a refund after paying the full amount. But now, if you want to kind of trial it, you can for free for 30 days, you might as well. Uh, I've been using it for the past month and a half or since it was released. Uh, and to be honest, as I've said in pretty much all my videos, I love it to bits and I think every other YouTuber likes it. Um, but the real pro guys who are creating documentaries, films and so on, aren't too keen on it. Hopefully, if any of you pro guys are watching it, you know, let me know, is this update really worth it or are they still kind of scraping the board? Um, yeah, sure, the compatibility issue has somewhat been sorted now. It was a hefty uh, file to download, I tell you that. But all in all, this update's been pretty good. You can full screen your Final Cut Pro X screen uh, and generally welcomed. Guys, let me know in the comments if you use Final Cut Pro X or what software do you use? Have you tried it? Did you kind of move to Final Cut Pro X initially when it was released and then ditched it for Adobe or Adobe or whatever you want to call it? Avid because you didn't like the kind of step which Apple took? Leave it in the comments below if you've got any iPhone related stories. Leave them in the comments below. If you're watching on iTunes, it's going to be a bit hard for you to leave comments because you can't leave comments. Leave it in the ratings uh, section, that would be pretty nice. And as always guys, I will see you guys in another life. Cheers. Looking to send a package at the lowest price possible? Simple, visit parcelmonkey.co.uk, follow these four simple steps, have the package collected from your doorstep, and then sit back and relax.